In this video, I'll show you how I make my custom controller overlays. I see a lot of tutorials on how to recolor the presets, but nothing on creating entirely new models. It's a pretty long process, so keep that in mind. Assuming you want to make an entirely new overlay based off of a controller, download a high quality picture of the controller of your choosing. I suggest trying to find a picture of the top of the controllers as well for the triggers. Since we're creating entirely new shapes, you could skip this step, but if you want to just modify a preset, go to Gamepad Viewer website and connect your controller, select player 1 and the skin you want, right click, inspect element, go to sources, then look for the assets folder and then drag all of these SVG images into new tabs so you can download them by right clicking and selecting save as. Name it the same as what it is in Gamepad Viewer. Once everything is downloaded, open your drawing software. I use Adobe Illustrator which you can open SVG files with, but most software you can't. You can use something like Photopea to edit for free, which is very similar to the Adobe layout, but you'll have to learn this on your own. If you downloaded files, drag them into your software, otherwise create a new file called Base and make it 1000 by 1000 pixels. We can edit the size later if it doesn't match your controller. Create three layers called top, screenshots, and bottom. If you aren't using any reference photos, you don't have to use these layers. Select your screenshot layer and drag your reference image into the project. Line it up with your canvas. Grab your trigger screenshot as well and position it so the triggers are above the bumpers in similar size. If you need to, crop the image so it isn't blocking your regular reference screenshot. From here, you can resize the canvas if you want with the artboard tool. I like to also copy the reference image off of the canvas so you can compare yours with the original. Lock the screenshot layers when everything's adjusted. Now for the actual designing part. This could be tricky at first if you're new to graphic design, so take it slow and if you need to, take lots of breaks. It will look pretty funky until you add all the details, so don't judge the colors yet. Also, every single shape size should be in factors of 1. If there are any decimals, it usually won't line up properly later. You can edit that after you make each shape here. We're going to start with just modeling where everything goes. Select the top layer and use the pen tool to outline the controller. Click around to draw the sides and click and drag to add curves. Holding Alt will let you adjust the angle for the next point's curves, and holding Shift will let you make the lines perfectly horizontal, vertical, or diagonal. I recommend disabling the fill and having a slight stroke so you can see what you're doing easier, and assuming your controller shell is symmetrical, you'll need to do this on one side and reflect the copy. After, get rid of the stroke and make the image solid with whatever color you want. I like to do gray. You can join both sides together once you line them up with the Shape Builder tool. Just select both parts and highlight them with the tool. Once you're done, drag this into the bottom layer so we can move on. Let's place the joystick positions next. The actual joysticks are in a separate file, but we're going to place these anyway because we'll eventually be making them smaller and serve as the holes under the sticks. Select the top layer and place two circles where both sticks should be. For the face buttons, I like to make a perfect cross to make sure the distance between them are all even. Some controllers like the Switch Pro have slightly wider proportions, so adjust to your liking. Create a black circle at one of the points and copy it at every end of the cross. This is going to be under the buttons so we can line them up. Once they're all in place, you can delete the cross and group the circles. To select multiple layers at once, hold Ctrl and click these layers in the layer panel using the command Ctrl plus G. D-pads can be pretty tricky depending on how they're shaped. If you have a disconnected D-pad like the PS5 controller, just make one shape and copy the image a few times to group the images, like you did on the face buttons. If it's rectangular like the Switch Pro, just make a rectangle, rotate a copy, and join the shapes. If it has rounded ends, instead, we're going to start by making a square in the middle, then draw one of the directions with another rectangle, use the curvation tool to add a new point and drag it outward to make an arc. Then copy it three more times and place them along the square and join it all together with the Shape Builder tool. If it has rounded inner corners as well, use the direct selection tool, select the four corners in the middle by holding shift and clicking them, and dragging them outwards. Next up is the bumpers. Grab your pen tool and outline your bumper. You can draw over the base if you want, since we're going to remove it with the shape builder tool anyways. Just select the base and bumper, get the shape builder tool, click on the part of the bumper we wish to keep, and delete the scrap. Reflect the copy on the other side. The triggers are also very easy, again use the pen tool to outline it and reflect it on the other side. The only other three buttons that work with Gamepad Viewer is Start, Select, and Touchpad if you use PlayStation, besides the Quadrant, which I'm not going to cover since no one cares about a working Quadrant. 
Just do the same thing you did for the triggers. Once you're done, save the project and export it into a PNG. Make sure you're exporting as the same size as the canvas. These steps follow for every other project. So for now, we're done with the base layer. I like to design everything after I line up the parts in OBS, but you can design it first if you want. Keep in mind that the sticks and face buttons are displayed separately in the other image files, so I suggest keeping those black for the base. The other image files represent the buttons being pressed. For face buttons, I select one of the black circles we made from the base layer and look at the size of the shape. As I mentioned earlier, every shape should be sized to have no decimals, so round up or down if you need to. Get that number and create a project that is four times the width and two times the height of your circle size. Copy the circle over and move it into the top left corner of your canvas. Now, copy it seven more times to fill all of the gaps. If you did everything correctly, there should be no space in between the shapes, and nothing will go off the canvas. The top buttons are going to be the unpressed buttons, and the bottom are pressed. For now, just put the letters in them and make the bottom circles lighter. For bumpers and triggers, similar to the face buttons, select one and make a new project, but of the same size of the image this time. Move them into the new project and make it the same color as the lighter color for the face buttons. For start and select, find out the size of one of them and make the project twice the width of that. Move them into the project with the start being on the right. Again, make them lighter. For D-pad, we're going to do something a little different. Go back to your base project and copy the D-pad off the canvas. Use the line tool to make a line going straight through the D-pad at a 45 degree angle. You can do this by holding shift. Make sure it's centered and make a copy of the other angle. Select everything and use the shape builder tool again to click all four points and isolate them and delete everything else once you're done. The D-pad should be fully separated now. Stack them to look something like this and after select everything, create a project of the size of everything combined and move it into the project, make all of it lighter. The sticks are up next, which is a lot easier than the previous ones. Go to your base project and select one of the circles for your sticks and make a new project with two times the width of your circle. Copy your circle so there's two in the canvas side by side. Make the left one lighter since this is going to be the selected one. Once we're done, go back and resize your stick circles. Like I said earlier, this is going to be what's under the stick when you move it. Depending on the style you're going for, you may want to make it larger or smaller. Once everything is exported as a PNG, we can now move on to the hardest part, which is the coding. No, we don't have to write a new script, but we do have to modify one. Pretty much everything we're doing is adjusting the placement and size of everything, replacing the stock pictures with the ones we'll upload. Go to imager.com and create a new post. Drag all of your PNGs where it says drop images here. Next, go back to Gamepad Viewer, and with the inspect element menu still open, look for style.css, and scroll down until you see the controller you want to use. I suggest using the Xbox One for pretty much every modern controller, but for PlayStation controllers, I use the PS4 one obviously for the touchpad. The code is different for every controller, so keep that in mind when looking through. For example, PlayStation displays both triggers instead of one, whereas Xbox reflects the image on both sides and there's no characters on them. Select the code for your controller and copy it. Open pasteofcode.com and paste it there. First, we're going to replace all of the image files with the ones we just uploaded to Imager. Look for your base image and copy it. Right at the top where it says controller.xbox or something similar is your base code. Paste the link in the parentheses for the background colon URL line. Make sure you add .png at the end of the link. We'll do this for every part of the controller. Just look through the code and look for the background colon URL lines. Once done with that, go back to the top and edit the height and width for your base to match your base image size. Just make sure you type the PX after the numbers because it won't register anything if you don't. If you don't want to use the quadrant, make the height and width zero pixels. Still technically renders, but this is a quick solution to hide it. We haven't finished coding yet, but we're going to use OBS to help us line everything up. Create a new source under browser and title it whatever you want. Go back to Gamepad Viewer and close the Inspect Element menu. Click the three lines at the top left and click Generate URL. Select the skin and player number you're using, and I like to put the dead zone on 0.0 .0 so small inputs on the joystick are registered. Click on Click to Copy URL and paste it back into the properties of your OBS source where it says URL. While we're here, find the size of your base image and change the value of the OBS panel to match yours. For custom CSS, this is where we're going to paste our custom code. Copy all of your code from Pace of Code 
and paste it into the OBS. Once you click OK and move your controller a bit, you should see your controller, but most of it's going to be misaligned. This is where we line up everything, which is the most annoying process. Now we can go back to the code and start editing the other sizes and proportions. If you have two displays, move OBS on one of them and code on the other. Otherwise, you'll just have to minimize the tabs a lot. So for every part of the process, we're going to edit the size of the images, just like we did for the base. Then we're going to adjust the background positions for the ones that have multiple shapes per image. Then we're going to move them where they're supposed to go. Xbox triggers and bumpers are the exact same process. In the section for dot Xbox, dot trigger, and dot bumper, make sure it's not the plural section. Edit the height and width to match your trigger and bumper image size. Copy the edited code and paste it into OBS, replacing the old code. They should now be fully visible, but not in the right spots. We're going to do this in the plural section. To line up the left one, edit the line that says left. Do this before you move on to the right, which is the width. To edit the vertical position for both, edit the top number. If you don't see this, add it in. Edit the numbers a lot until you get it basically pixel perfect. Once your triggers and bumpers are in the right spot, scroll down until you see Xbox Back, Xbox Start. This is your Start and Select button. A few lines under should be the Xbox Start, which is your Start button. Set the background position value to the width you just entered. You may have to adjust it, but it should be very close to this number. Go back up and see the Xbox arrows, which is how we position those buttons. Works the same way as the bumpers. Left first, then edit the width. Under start and select should be A, B, X, Y, which is the face buttons. These are a bit harder because they technically involve eight buttons. For dot button, make the width and height the size of one button, which is half of the height of the image. Right under that is the button dot press section. Make the background position Y the same number, but negative. You can also remove the value for the margin top if you want it to be a flat press. Now we're going to edit the background positions of the buttons to make them actually look like buttons. A should be 0, 0 if you set it up in the right order. B should be the same as your background position Y for button press. X should be double that and Y should be B but positive. I say should be because all of the buttons sometimes are a little different and off. so. Edit what looks right to you, edit the numbers a bit. After you got everything displaying properly, we just have to edit the values to reposition them. You can move all four buttons if you want to edit these numbers up here and the individual values in all of these sections. This can be challenging, so this is where I edit the opacity to 0.5 so I can see through the buttons. This part can be pretty tedious, so expect it to take a while, especially if this is your first overlay. Once your face buttons are in place, we can move on to the sticks. Again, look for the singular section named Xbox Stick and edit the width and height. These values should be the same, which is the height of the image, not the width. Then edit the background position. The numbers should be close to the same as the height value. Next sections are for the positions of the sticks. If you have symmetrical sticks, have the top values the same for both. Just edit the values a bunch until you get them in the right spot. Finally, under that is the D-pad or face section. Make the width for all of these the width of the image, and the height will vary depending on the direction. So this is honestly just a guess until you get it right. Or you can go back into your drawing program and see the height for the shapes. Just remember that up and down are going to be the same, as well as left and right. As you edit these, adjust the background position so everything lines up, and of course, like the other face buttons, we can move all four here and the individual ones here. A little bonus step if you want to use green screen for anything, click on the source, click filters, add a chroma key filter, and select the color you want to take out. You can edit these settings to whatever looks better. Alright, so now that the soul sucking coding is complete, we can finally decorate the controller. I can't really tell you guys what to do from here since it really depends on what style you're going for, but I can give a few tips of mine. If you want to add a shadow for the face buttons, you can do that here. Use color gradients to make them more detailed and have some depth. I like using vertical gradients for the back and sometimes circular gradients for d-pad, sticks, etc. If you want to add a custom design like this one, you can get an image from Google or AI, whatever you want, and make a clipping mask with the base. So yeah, go crazy with this guys. I hope this video was useful because, well, this script was 3,000 words. So if this video gets 100 likes, I'll release all of my custom designs. Thanks for watching, y'all.